Hey, Steve Dimash here for Chef Knives to Go, and this is the Hatsukokoro Komorebe Aogami or Blue Number no. 2 Gyuto 210 millimeter knife. So, this knife is an all reactive blade, and let's take a look at the construction and the weight and dimensions. Uh, the weight and dimensions can vary a little bit from knife to knife. Uh, so, this is constructed of Aogami or Blue Paper Number no. 2 reactive high carbon steel. The heat treat on that is about 62 Rockwell, plus or minus a little bit. And uh, the, the construction is three layers, and on either side of that reactive core cutting edge steel, which you can see is coming out from the cladding right here, you've also got a reactive soft iron cladding as well. So this is an all-reactive blade. You will not want to let it sit wet. It'll start to uh, get a patina and stain on it as you use it, and then it'll gain a little bit of a you know protective oxidation coating from that over time. So uh, the... Weight on this particular one is 210 grams or 7.4 ounces. Edge length is 220 millimeters, so it's a bit oversized, about 8.65 inches. That's from the tip to the back of the heel. And then the overall length with this handle is about 374 millimeters or 14.2 inches. I measure the spine in three places because this has a really uh, well-executed distal taper, which means the spine thickness uh, starts getting smaller as it goes towards the tip and this is a beautiful example that this is a, a great craftsmanship on this knife it's a, just a extremely well made blade so the spine thickness above the uh, back of the heel is about uh, 3.6 coming out of the handles these are a little bit thicker coming out of the handle and then about halfway down I measured about 2.2 millimeters and then a couple inches from the end did 1.75 millimeters so it just thins out and a distal taper and then take a look how thin that tip is it's very thin at the tip and it's also very thin at the edge, so the performance on this should be excellent. That's really thin, folks. The height is pretty generous. It's 51 and a half millimeters at the heel on this sample, and uh, so I've, you've got a curve here into the, from the choil, the back of the blade, into the neck, and there's a great spot there for your finger for a pinch grip. Uh, this handle, I believe it's ebony. I'm just going to kind of estimate that it's ebony. It's definitely not wenge but it's a pretty heavy handle. So that's gonna bring the balance point back a little bit because it's handles fairly long and it's got heavy dense wood in it. And again, I think that's ebony, but so there's the balance point. It's pretty much right at that choil there. From a pinch grip standpoint, the handle's gonna, it's gonna have a little bit of a handle heavy uh, balance on it. Uh, the handle, speaking of which, is octagonal. And again, I believe just from experience, this looks like ebony to me and it's a, Buffalo horn ferrule, this one's got some really cool markings on it. It's not black, it's not white, it's just kind of in between. And very, very cool markings on here. This uh, gap that you see here uh, between the tang and the, the neck of the knife is intentional. And that's kind of an older school install. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's a decision, uh, you know, purposeful decision made on this. So they've got a great glue up joint here. And you can see this buffalo horn ferrule, a lot of times they have cut out there for the inside material, but this is flat and has that material all the way to the front. So this handle is really cool. Uh, fit and finish is excellent on the handle, of course. Uh, the whole blade fit and finish is very, very good. I'm actually going to take a little beauty shot here with that ferrule in there because that ferrule is really cool. So speaking of fit and finish, uh, they've done a lot of work here, a lot of finish work. There's a rounded, polished spine. They've rounded and polished this choil here. Uh, out of the box edge, I'll give it a 6 out of 10. It's a good out of the box edge, but you can definitely get this steel really, really sharp. On the left side of the blade, you can see uh, the finish has got horizontal strokes to it. The uh, They've got some laser engraved kanji on the right side of the blade here. This is where the grind starts. So you can see the grind is very generous down to the edge. So this thing's going to fall through food. Very generous grind. Uh, here is the left side of the blade. And that also has some engraved, looks like laser engraved markings on it as well. And you can see how thin this is. I mean, you can see how much of the core steel is coming out of the cladding there. So this is a really thin at the edge blade. Kind of reminds me of uh, some of you have been around a while, the Fujiyama series. Some of you will know that name. Kind of reminiscent of that. 
uh, just from a visual standpoint. Uh, let's see, anything else we need? I think we did balance point. So let's take a look at this on the cutting board. This has a fair amount of belly towards the tip and not a lot of flat. So you'll see it just kind of goes into the heel. It's kind of a continuous, kind of a slight belly into the heel. There's a little bit of a flat section towards the back, fairly aggressive belly towards the tip. And so I can get pretty darn high. This will rock way up there. Again, you can see it's a pretty aggressive belly towards the tip. So this thing will rock great. Push pull cuts, glide cuts, tip draws. You got to raise the heel a lot for tip draws. So probably not the best there. A uh, little bit of chopping towards the back, but there's definitely not a big flat spot on this for chopping. So that's kind of the characteristics of the edge profile. But again, this is a uh, extremely well finished knife. It's clean grind, straight blade, excellent uh, execution. Just a, a really nice knife. So this is the Hatsukokoro uh, Komorebe. Algami or blue number two, Guto 210 millimeter knife from Chef Knives to Go.